If energy is pumped into a metal antenna in such a way that causes free electrons to vibrate to and fro a few hundred thousand times per second, a radio wave is emitted. If the free electrons could be made to vibrate to and fro on the order of a million billion times per second, a visible light wave would be emitted. But light is not produced from metallic antenna. Light is produced by electrons accelerating at the atomic and molecular scale, sometimes sloshing among ions as in an incandescent bulb or at the surface of the sun. Our concern here is with electron energy in single atoms. The details of light emission from atoms involve the transitions of electrons from higher to lower energy states within the atom. Atoms possess their own characteristic patterns of electron shells, or energy states. These states are found only at specific energies. We say they are discrete. We call these discrete states quantum states, and we'll return to quanta in later screencasts. For now, we'll concern ourselves only with the potential energy of electrons relative to the atomic nucleus, and see how this ties to light emission. An electron farther from the nucleus has a greater electric potential energy with respect to the nucleus than an electron nearer the nucleus. The more distant electron is in a higher energy state, or equivalently, at a higher energy level. In a sense, this is like popping a ball up a flight of stairs. On the higher steps, the ball has more gravitational potential energy. When an electron is boosted by any means to a higher energy level, we say the atom has been excited. We call the process excitation. De-excitation occurs when the electron drops to a lower level and emits a photon. The energy of the photon? exactly the energy difference between the energy levels. Here's an atom being bombarded with a fast-moving particle. Energy is imparted to the atom, whereupon the atom becomes excited. The electron's higher position is only momentary. It soon returns to its lowest energy state, giving up its temporarily acquired energy by emitting radiant energy, a photon. The atom has undergone the process of excitation and de-excitation. The frequency of the photon is directly proportional to its energy. In shorthand notation, E proportional to F. When the proportionality constant H is introduced, this becomes the exact equation E equals HF, where H is Planck's constant, which we'll return to in later lessons. A photon in a beam of red light, for example, carries an amount of energy that corresponds to its frequency. Another photon of twice the frequency has twice as much energy and is found in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. A variety of atoms in a material that are excited produce many photons with a variety of frequencies, all of which correspond to the variety of levels excited. These frequencies correspond to characteristic colors of light from each chemical element. The light emitted in the glass tubes of advertising signs is due to excitation. The different colors in the signs correspond to the excitation of different gases, although it's common to refer to any of these as neon. Only a specific red light is that of neon. At the ends of the glass tubes that contain the gas are electrodes. Electrons are boiled off these electrodes and are jostled back and forth at high speeds by a high AC voltage exciting many of the atoms in collisions. The process occurs and recurs many times as gaseous atoms continually undergo a cycle of excitation and de-excitation. Electrical energy is being transformed to radiant energy, and light is emitted big time. The colors of various flames are due to excitation. Here's nephew John at a campfire. Different atoms in the flame emit colors characteristic of their energy level spacings. Every element excited in a flame or otherwise emits its own characteristic color or colors. Excitation is illustrated in the aurora borealis in the northern hemisphere and also the aurora australis in the southern hemisphere. High-speed charged particles that originate in the solar wind strike atoms and molecules in the upper atmosphere. They emit light exactly as occurs in a neon tube. 
The different colors in the aurora correspond to the excitation of different gases. Oxygen atoms produce a greenish-white color, nitrogen molecules produce red-violet, and nitrogen ions produce a blue-violet color. Auroral emissions are not restricted to visible light. They also include infrared, ultraviolet, and X-ray radiation. The next time you see evidence of atomic excitation, perhaps the green flame produced when a piece of copper is placed in a fire, squint your eyes and see if you can imagine electrons jumping from one energy level to another in a pattern characteristic of the atom being excited. A pattern that displays a color unique to that atom. For that's what's happening. It's time for a concluding question. First, if Phil Physiker tries to kick a ball out of a ditch, many short kicks won't do the job because the ball keeps falling back. A kick of just the right amount of energy is needed to get the ball out of the ditch. So my question is, how is just the right amount of kick similar to the energy needed to boost an electron to the next highest energy level in atomic excitation? Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.